Well, hello everyone. This is Byron King with Investor Intel coming to you from the uh, Convention Center in Toronto uh, at the PDAC Conference 2022. I have two wonderful guests here from the uranium space, uh, the only two uranium producers in the United States, John Cash from UR Energy and Curtis Moore from Energy Fuels. Thank you, sirs, for being here. Yeah, uh, John, real quick, you, you're out there in Wyoming, you've got an operation, and you are producing uranium, is that fair to say? We are, and, you know, we've allowed market conditions to kind of dictate our production, so we're uh, kind of just skimming along at a low rate right now, waiting for the market to turn around, but we are producing. We've got guys out the mine, and we're turning out some talents. And Curtis, uh, same question to you. Tell us about your facility and, and the things that you process. Sure. So Energy Fuels has been the largest producer in the United States for the last several years. Uh, this year, we're going to produce about 100, 120,000 pounds of, of U-308, which isn't very much in the grand scheme of things, but we can quickly ramp up production in, in, in response to the improved market conditions we see now. Okay. Well, I took some math courses in college, and when I divide 120,000 pounds by 2,000, I get to about like 60 tons. Uh, the world annual global production of uranium is up over, say, 50,000 tons, and we're looking in the United States at 60 tons from you. And how many? How much How much from uh, from you are, please? A few thousand pounds. A few thousand pounds, very, a ton or two, low. yeah. So so here's the United States producing this much uranium in a world that, you know, produ you know consumes and produces this much. Um, is this the kind of thing that can be ramped up in the United States? Do, do we have that capability? Yeah. You know, we do have capability in the U.S. We have a number of licensed and permitted mines, especially with energy fuels and your energy. Uh, but it does take time. It takes capital. And we need market signals to be able to do that. And right now, so much of that material is coming out of Russia and Kazakhstan. It's hard to get that market signal when state-owned enterprises are really driving the market. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a wet blanket, I promise you. But I do follow these statistics. I was looking at the Department of Energy statistics on how many people work in the uranium business in the United States. And in 2021, it was a distressingly low number. It, uh, under 200 people work in the whole field of production and processing of uranium. It's a tiny number. Do we have the intellectual capacity? That, that when it, do we have the, the trained people, the tradespeople, the workers can, to, to, to ramp it up when you have to? Well, we think we do. Um, Energy Fuels, we have about 100 people working for the company right now. And we have been in production recently along with uh, UR Energy. And so, yeah, there is going to likely be a challenge in trying to ramp up in terms of personnel. But, uh, but, but again, it's, over the next couple of years, we should be able to train up that workforce and get uh, U.S. production back on, the, back on the global map. Okay, well, it's not like flipping on a light switch and the lights come on. We're talking a couple of years. And along those lines, just very recently, there have been rumors, and you have to, you know, you have to you know, think what you want about rumors, but that the, that the U.S. government wants to drop, you know, something like four billion plus billion with a B dollars into purchasing domestic produced uranium just because of the issue of this much in the U.S. and that much from Russia, Kazakhstan, what have you. Uh, is that the kind of thing that can, that that that, will that would that money go to go to you, or is this going to go into a, a stock play, or what? Are, what's, what's the how's that money going to get translated into you know yellow cake and metal that you know that we can put into a reactor? Yeah. So the program you're talking about it was just announced last week by the Biden administration. So it hasn't gone through Congress. It hasn't gotten funding yet. Right. And it's really short on details. But so far, what we know is that we'll probably be mostly focused on enrichment and conversion. But the feedstock for those two processes would likely come from domestic mines. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see what the details are when it comes out uh, and it goes through Congress. Now, 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 Curtis, you have a plant in uh, Utah that actually, you know, processes material. What's the state? What's the status of your plant? Is it is it is it fairly new? Is it old? Is it what you know? Tell what, yeah, what sure. should people know about it? Sure. So the White Mesa Mill is the only conventional uranium mill left in the United States today. The only one left. Uh, the only one left. There used to be quite a few, but there's only one left right now. So if there's conventional ore in a conventional mine, it ha that material has to go through the White Mesa Mill. Uh, recently, actually, our mill has been focused on rare earth elements. Uh, it has been determined that we can actually process a lot of rare earth uh, bearing minerals at the White Mesa Mill and produce advanced rare earth products. But uh, we're actually right now getting ready to switch over to producing uranium. And uh, as this, these markets come back, and we've actually seen markets come back a little bit. Uh, our company has been able to sign a couple of long-term contracts with some U.S. utilities. Uh, those market signals are starting to arrive right now. Um, and it's going to allow us to ramp up production at our mines, which will provide feedstock uh, to, to the mill. Mm -hmm. And now out of your mill, out of your mill, what is, do you produce yellow cake or do you, uh, tell, tell the viewers or the watchers, 
you know, how does how does this rock in the ground turn into uranium fuel that goes into a reactor somewhere? Sure. sure. Well, both of our companies produce yellow cake. Oh. Uh, yeah, natural uranium concentrates, U-308. Uh, the, the, the White Mesa Mill is hard rock mining, so you have an open pit mine or an underground mine, and you take that material to the mill, and we, we recover the, uh, the yellow cake in that manner. Uh, uh, John and your energy, they have ISR. We also have ISR mines as well, and that's uh, uh, you know it's, it's basically in place uh, in place mining where you, you dissolve it in ISR in situ recovery, where essentially you you literally wash the uranium out of a porous permeable rock uh, with a very very benign solution. It's not like it's not fracking, okay? It's not fracking. Uh, just real, real quickly though, just people might be wondering where does the where does this yellow cake go from there? How does it become a how does it become a nuclear reactor fuel? Yeah, so after we mine the product, make yellow cake, mm -hmm. uh, typically here in the U.S., the product will get shipped to Conradine uh, in Metropolis, Illinois. And they do a chemical conversion process, taking it from a chemical form U-308 to uranium hexafluoride. So mm -hmm. that's typically where it goes in the U.S., and then from there, it would need to go to an enrichment facility, either here in the U.S. or in Europe uh, for processing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. Uh, we are almost out of time. I will just say that to the viewers out there that if you are interested in the uranium space and you are interested in companies that actually produce uranium from the ground, you're looking at them. Uh, you, you know, you are energy and uh, energy fuels company. Uh, they are both up and running companies. They've got employees. They actually do real work and they produce a real product. No vaporware there. Uh, and uh, with that, I thank you for your time and for uh, you know, sharing your, your perspectives and your, your knowledge with us. Uh, and thank you out there, audience, for, uh, for, for watching.